do you want to include a live streaming feature into your application do you want a application where users can host their events and their audiences can attend this video is exactly for you hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video we are going to create a live streaming application using sego cloud sdk so as you can see i have joined in as a host from my original device which i have in my hand and uh, you can see there are some features like beautification features also available if you are a beauty content creator and things like that uh, if i start this uh, the live stream will get started and i can enter the same id which i used to enter there and i can join in as an audience from my emulator device so this is the way it will go work and zigo uh, cloud provides you with a free trial with uh, around 10000 minutes of uh, live streaming Uh, which can be really helpful when you are trying to bootstrap things out and just trying new things out the developer experience uh, is uh, really good with this sdk uh, i can say because i have uh, created multiple applications using it and uh, before wasting any more time let's get started so let's start by creating a new flutter project give it a name and there your project will be created Now, after creating this project, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to the Zigo Cloud's website and create a new account. If you don't have one, I currently have an account, so I'll just simply log in. After logging into the Zigo Cloud account, you will need to create a new project. Select Create Your Project. and as you will see there are a lot of options available the one which we are going to choose is the live stream option so there it is the live streaming option select next give the project name and there are two options ui kits and sdk ui kits offer you a more seamless experience but if you want more control you can go for the sdk option as well I am currently going with the UI kits option. Now you can choose your platform. For example, here I am choosing Flutter. Now you can enable the beauty standardization options that are given here. I'll select it and create save. After this you will get your app ID and app signature which you will need later so just keep this in mind Now coming back to the application uh, I have already run the application you can see the standard counter application which is there Now I'll search for the documentation Vigo Cloud live stream proto and you will find the documentation of how to integrate and how to use this uh, package into your flutter application so i'll just simply follow the instructions most of the instructions are given in this documentation but there are two additional steps which i'll tell you in the video that you need to follow in order to make your project work The first step is to simply install the package. Since I already have it, so it's showing me to upgrade. But in your case, it should be installing. Now moving on to the second step, it is to import the SDK into your code. So I'll just simply copy this instruction, paste it over here. Then there is this widget given over here, which is a stateless widget, which you'll need to put in your code. So before putting uh, this into my code what i'll do i'll just clean up this project a bit i'll simply remove the extra code which comes in the standard template remove all the comments and then i'll paste this uh, class over here before that i'll create a new stateless widget 
just to keep another layer between the uh, your material app and your scaffold. Now I'll copy this code. So this is the actual widget that you will render. Now I'll simply put some dummy value here in the app ID and app signature. You can put your values here, I'll put it later on. After this, let's move on to configuring this uh, SDK with our project. So there are a few important steps, so please watch it carefully. Go inside this Android app, build Gradle file, and bump up the version of compile SDK from its default value to 33. Then we need to add the permissions in the android manifest.xml file. So I'll copy these permissions. Now make sure that it's between this manifest and application tab. And with this you are done. Moving on to the next part. So you see they have explained it here as well. In the next part you need to create a new file. Go into app, create a new file and name it proguard-rules.pro and paste this code inside of it. Now in the next step, you need to include this file into your build.gradle. So go into build type release and add this code to it. After adding this, uh, I'll tell you two more steps which are not mentioned in the documentation. So the first one is changing the minimum SDK version. Change it to 19 and add another line below it mm, that is multi dex enabled and set it to true. Now with this we are done with our uh, configuration and we can start the application right now. So after starting you will see that uh, there is nothing on the screen because of course, we have not added scaffold and all, so let me quickly add those. We'll add a scaffold and an app bar. Now I will quickly proceed to creating the UI. UI will be very simple, containing one text field and one switch. Uh, I'll tell you what it is for. First, let me create it. I'm creating a text form field and a row. Inside the row, I'm giving the text. I'll switch it, uh, keep it with a switch. Now I'll convert it to a stateful widget because uh, we need to make this switch work, right? After this, what I'll do, I'll define uh, the controller for the text form field. After this, I'll define three things. One is the form key required for the form. Second is the text controller. And third one is a variable which will control the value of the switch. So here is our uh, controller. And here is our button switch. Initially I set it to false. Now I will wrap this thing with a form. provided the key. Now there's one thing which I missed out. Uh, that is, uh, I need to write all these variables inside of this second class, not in the first class when we are creating a stateful widget. So now uh, the error is gone. And if you restart the application, you should have a form field with a switch.
just providing some padding. I'll set the controller now. Now, uh, on change uh, for the switch will go as follows. The value should be which uh, we have assigned to the variable. And uh, since we have a stateful variable right now, we can use set state to negate its value. So whenever you press it, it will just uh, flip its value on to off, off to on. Now the next thing I'm adding a floating action button. And uh, inside the on press of this floating action button, uh, I'll call navigator to navigate to a new page that is our live page. So basically on clicking this floating action button, uh, your live streaming page will open and inside of this uh, live page, I'll pass this ID as a parameter. I can name it start or just join. So once you click this join, it will actually navigate to this new page, live page, and it will pass the ID as a parameter to it. Also pass the host. So host is a person who is basically hosting the entire uh, live stream. If you are not a host, you can only be one other thing that is audience. So the switch is for that. Are you a host or an audience? Now in your applications, you can uh, make it according to your preference, according to your need. But for this demo application, I've uh, given this switch right here. Now I'm creating a new file keys.dart to place all my API and API signature keys here. Now I'm just replacing uh, these dummy values with my actual values that is app ID and app signature which will be imported from keys.dart. For user ID and username, I'm uh, going to use a random user ID and username. Simply use random dot next int and give it a parameter like 100 so it will simply generate a random parameter between uh, 0 to 100 now once you copy and paste this app id and app signature we are good to go simply paste your app id app id is an integer and app signature is a string With this, we are ready to uh, restart our application. Now, it is very important part here. Uh, before launching this application, there is just one mistake which I have made, which I realized later on after uh, recording this video. That is, uh, if you go to the place where we have passed the live ID as a parameter. So, let me just show you here. So you need to go to this place, this navigator and turn it to text from value. Now I have uh, set it up on two devices actually. One is my actual phone, smartphone and second is the emulator. So I'm running this application on two devices and I simply changed this val uh, value to text. And now if I try to join this live stream from my actual device, you will see it has started working. There are uh, many options which uh, this SDK provides us. All of them are there. And in the second device, you can join in as an audience. So you can write anything like hi, hello, and normal live streaming behavior, everything is there. There is also beautification feature, uh, which we discussed about in the starting of the video. You can check that as well. So overall, there are tons and tons of things that the Vigo Cloud SDK is providing. And the ease to uh, use this SDK is uh, really good. Now with this we have completed our application, uh, we have our live streaming application ready to be plugged in into our uh, different uh, use cases and thank you for watching.